Haleluya. 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 We give wonderful thanks to God for our choir. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the Spirit of the Lord which is upon them. Thank you, Jesus. Pray that the Lord will continue to anoint them. Amen. And use them Amen. through worship, through adoration, to bring glory to his name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so this morning, we are reading from the book of Deuteronomy, how God instructed his people what they needed to do after he brought them to the promised land. We all remember the story of the Israelites, how they went to Egypt, as a result of a big famine, how Joseph was raised up by God to save their lives. And even though there were only 40 that entered, after some time, they had increased to one and a half million people. Wow. And so it's a wonderful story which really depicts the life of the child of God. If you look at this church, you'll find that most of what happened to people that come to this church is very similar to the journey of the Israelites. Celestians are really Israelites if you look at their history. Because many of us, in fact most of us, have been brought from Egypt, from affliction, from years of slavery to sin and all kinds of things. And God finally brought us to this church. This church, I can tell you, is your Canaan land. This church is your promised land. So you should rejoice every day that God has brought you to this place because there are many people who are looking for a church like this, but they cannot get it. They don't know where to find it. And they're doing everything, yet there is no solution. But for those God has given the grace and has called, he will bring them to his church and they will see his glory. Amen. So we thank God for his grace. It is not our own power that we are here, not at all. It's entirely by the grace of God. Because it's not everybody that is called. So many are called, few are chosen. We are thankful that we are among the chosen ones. Hallelujah. 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 Alive, 
Uh, the salmon really was half words of preaching and half music. Because whenever he was preaching, frequently during his preaching, people would raise up songs. And it was those songs that carried the anointing of God. He would preach for about 10 minutes and they would sing again. He would another 10 minutes and they would sing again. That was the sermon he used to preach. Papa Shepard was a musician, as we all know, and he played different kinds of instruments himself. So the music carries the anointing of God along. It's always good to point traits. The uh, preaching with music. And God told them that when you get to the land, He says that when you get to the land that the Lord promised you and you possess it and dwell there. See, three things. First of all, you get there, then you possess it and finally stay there. See, there are many people that come to this church and don't last. They stay one, two weeks, they're gone. Something happens to them that uproots them from their Canaan land. May that not be my portion or your passion. Or your portion. Because it's when you have finally dwelt there, when you established very important points, then it says you shall take the first of the fruit of the earth and bring it to the Lord. And you put it in a basket and bring it to the place where the Lord that God shall choose to put his name there. So God expects after we get to our promised land, to show an appreciation to him for what he has done in bringing us to this land. You know, the Israelites were agriculturists, and so all they could bring was the fruit of the ground. And God expects you and I, whatever income, however we make our money, to bring a portion of it. It's called first fruit offering. To bring it to God, to show appreciation for what God has done in our lives. So you shall go to the priests and tell him, I profess this day unto the Lord, I have come to the country of the Lord, spend our fathers to give us. In other words, you not just bring it, no, you must give a testimony. As I said, when I was younger and we used to go to the church, the service would last from 10 till 6 30 pm, easily. Why? Because during the thanks offering, people are given a chance to testify. When they bring the thanks offering, they'll call them. Okay, tell us why you brought this offering. And the person will testify. This was what I was going through before. This was my life before. And God did this for me. And that's why I brought this offering. And we will all rejoice with them. In fact, I still remember I did this in London about 12 years, 14 years ago. You know, when I did the special thanks offering, and they gave me an opportunity to give my testimony. It's always good because then people can learn from experience and develop faith that God can do it for him or her. Surely he can do it for me. So God says that don't just bring it. You must say with your mouth what God has done for you. And say so you shall take it, the basket, and the priest shall take it with your hand and set it down before the altar of your, of, of your God. And you shall say, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. That was Abraham. We also can say the same thing. Many of, you know, Abraham was an idolatrous. His family were idolatrous. They didn't know you but God. But God chose this man out of that family and took him out to be his friend and his servants. Just like God has chosen you and I out of our families. Many of us come from very wicked families. Idol worshippers, witches, wizards, all kinds of things. But God chose you and I out of them and brought us into the mansion of lights, which is this church. So the Israelite of Abraham's father, and he went down to Egypt and sojourned there with a the few and became their a nation great and mighty and populous. We know the story how there was a famine in the land, and God sent Joseph before to prepare the place, and finally they arrived and his family went to meet Pharaoh. We know how they increased the number. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. That shows you that God can do anything. Can you imagine people who are just 40, now one and a half million? Who would have imagined that that would have from one family? It was a family of Jacob, really, that came to Egypt. It was from that family the whole tribe of Israelites came from. 